Hello everyone, happy Mindfulness Monday. It is peak week for me. Let me tell you, I am ready to be through this week. For those of you who don't know, my first bodybuilding competition is this Saturday and it's gonna be amazing in all ways, on stage, off stage, being done. Um, and I can just tell you right now, I am ready to be done. So with all that being said, really quick update before I get into the content of Mindfulness Monday this week. The office is only open today. That's it. Because once Tuesday night hits, I am off, I am resting, I am relaxing. Because a little bit of science for you here, because I got to bring in that, right? I'm here to teach y'all. Um, anything that can cause like a little bit of stress in our bodies can increase cortisol. And when we increase cortisol, we decrease recovery, we increase inflammation, we decrease our immune system when cortisol is elevated. Um, there's a lot of things that are impacted physiologically when our body has cortisol running through it. And I think I do a pretty good job at navigating my stress. And like sometimes stuff comes up during the week, especially working with one-on-one um, -on -one clients and practice members. So the more that I can just reduce my cortisol, excuse me, reduce my cortisol this week and uh, let my body rest and recover and reduce any amount of inflammation, that's what's gonna be the game changer for Saturday. So a little bit of a tip for y'all, rest and recovery and slowing down is where you make the gains, right? That's how you decrease inflammation. Um, and that's not just inflammation like in our body tissues, but inflammation in our systemic tissues. So our cardiovascular system, our gut, inflammation in the gut, right? Um, there's a lot of different ways that inflammation and uh, that energy can show up. So be mindful of that. Navigate your stress. That's what we're here to teach you all to do is how to navigate stress better. Because the illusion is that stress, like we try to make stress go away, right? Like, oh, I just need a less stressful life. It's like, no, what you really need is to learn how to navigate the life demands differently in your own perception and your own body mind. Because think about it, there's different forms of stress. And we've talked about this on Mindfulness Mondays. There's good stress, you stress, and then there's stress that breaks us down, which is distress. So keep, keep your mind shifting all the time and changing your language of what is it that you are manifesting in your life and how can you shift your language to say, you know what, it's not that I need less stress because the stress isn't going away. It's shifting your perception and your awareness of the demands of life, okay? So today, I want to talk to you about listening. Are you truly listening to your body? Or do you just think you're listening? When we slow down and pay attention and not resist, there is a true calling of surrendering to the experience. And in our culture, we are taught to push through, pain is bad, make it go away, resistance. And this energy of resistance can look like not stopping when you have physical, mental, emotional, spiritual pain. It can look like suppressing it with drugs, alcohol, medication, overbooking yourself because you don't want to deal with what's underneath the surface, avoiding the emotion. Resistance can look like literally seeking the answer outside of you for your own healing rather than just having a conversation. And this Mindfulness Monday was inspired by one of my practice, my long-term practice members. I absolutely love her, Lisa. I don't know if she's in this group, um, but she's very, you know, she would, she's got a lot of wisdom to share. And she's very open about, you know, sharing that she's been doing this work for a long time. And, you know, I've been seeing a lot lately, a lot of women coming in with like hip pain and hips have to do with moving forward and taking that energy, that power in our hips. They're the strongest joint of the body. They're the biggest joint of the body and moving it forward when maybe you feel the forces around you don't want you to move forward and it wants you to be stagnant. So I've been seeing a lot of that. And what was really profound is she was sharing with me how 
she actually stopped for an hour. Get this. She put aside enough time. She put an hour aside to stop, listen, and pay attention. Slow down. Have a conversation with your body. How do we have a conversation with your body? You can use your hands on that part of your body. You can use your breath. The breath is a great like merging of conversation between the body and mind. And you can ask certain questions. And when you ask, the quality of the questions determines the quality of the outcome and therefore the quality of your life. So for example, you can shift your question of like, how do I make this go away? Make it stop. Like, how do I make the stop versus notice this shift and see how it lands for you. Asking, how do I make it go away to like, what is my body telling me at this time? Or literally like talk to it. Like, yo, yo heart, like what wisdom are you trying to communicate with me? What wisdom are you looking to share with me today? What is this energy you are expressing through me and communicating to me that maybe I, in the past, was not yet ready to receive? Notice the language shift. Notice the energetic shift of stop, make it go away. That's resistance, resist. And what we resist persists. Surrendering looks like fully accepting the experience that you are having. And when you surrender and just let go and ride that wave of intensity, whether it's an emotional wave, a physical wave, right? I know some of you dealing with like stuff, kids going back to school. It's fucking intense, man. I get it. Well, man, however you identify, surrender is very different than resistance. And when you surrender, I imagine like I just, I just fall back into the ocean and I just surrender and the salt water is holding me and I ask those questions to go deeper. So try that on. If you're dealing with stuff and you are of this mindset of like, make it go away, make it go away, make it go away. Remember everything that your body creates is intelligent, including pain. I'm not saying it's comfortable. I'm not saying it's enjoyable at all. Been there, <laughs> trust me, been there on this bodybuilding journey. I've dealt with some emotional, spiritual pain. And let me tell you, I can get into resistance too, right? I'm looking for that magical guru to try to fix me. I'm looking for the person who has all the solutions to like make it go away. When in reality, if that guru, that doctor, that healer takes it away from you, you are missing out on some of the greatest wisdom that you can learn to cultivate in your own body, mind. You are your own best healer. You are the guru. You are the doctor. And I'm sorry that the universe did not give you a manual on this. You know, we get our car, we get a manual about our car. We get a cell phone, we get a manual about our cell phone. But we did not get a manual about our body minds. And there's a lot of different forces out there telling you that you're broken, that you're never going to heal. You know, I was listening to a podcast this morning. One of my great mentors, Lou Corletto, I actually went and swam with him with the dolphins a, lot, a couple weeks ago. And he said, I really love this. He said, it's fine to accept a diagnosis, a label, whatever, and do not accept their prognosis. For example, let's say that you have a label of ADHD or all the way to like endometriosis or cancer. It can be very important to understand that, what's going on in the body. That's why we do objective testing in our office is to get like, what is going on, right? Do you have nervous system dysfunction or not? What is going on? Then, only then, do you get to choose your prognosis? He was also saying that they have seen studies where people were diagnosed with cancer and then the doctor says, and you only have six months to live, you know, they, they claim their future for them. Like this is really bad and you only have six months to live. Like they know, and I get there's trends and things and stuff like that. I'm not saying that, but you are a unique individual and healing, healing is so individually experienced. Just because you maybe are diagnosed with something doesn't mean that you're going to follow the same path. You know why? Because you and only you, in your DNA blueprint, in your genetic code, there is 
only one of you, only one. So why accept another trajectory that isn't who you are? Resistance versus surrender. Surrender to the experience without giving it a label perhaps and choose another question. Choose another outcome for yourself. You are at choice. This is where autonomy lies, my friends. Yes, I get doctors like myself have gone through years of schooling to understand physiology. And yet, look at some of the people who defy the standard deviation, who define it. I've seen many people get diagnosed with things. The doctors have told them that they're not going to heal. The doctors have told them, we don't know what's going on. You got to be stuck with this for life. And you know what they do? They choose another prognosis for themselves. A prognosis from within, a personal prognosis. They're not going to take, they're not going to take that. They stand up for themselves. They say, you know what? I get that this thing could cause this and I'm willing to choose another path and be different. And my friends, when you do that, when you choose a new paradigm for yourself, guess what that does? Through quantum entanglement, through epigenetics, you create a whole new field of possibility for other people to do the same. So you are literally a living embodied possibility for everyone else in the world. And we've seen this in other ways, right? The person who broke the four minute mile, guess what that did? It made it possible for every single person. And now we're seeing, gosh, I, I think close to almost three minutes maybe, but that's nuts to me. Do not make me run a mile. <laughs> no. <sighs> I think my fastest mile was like under seven minutes and I was like dead tired after that. My point with all of this, you are at choice. Listen. Have a conversation with your body. If you can give yourself an hour to go into it, freaking do it. And you know what? On the other side, she had a massive breakthrough. Massive breakthrough. Because she surrendered to the experience. Rather than resisting and searching outside. In chiropractic, we believe in this principle called ADIO, above, down, inside, out. The body heals if you choose it. And if you want to choose the paradigm of, well, I was diagnosed with this, so I have to live with it, that's your choice. You don't have to live into the prognosis of someone else. You get to create your own personal prognosis and move beyond and be that possibility for yourself for your family, for your friends, for the culture, for the world. I mean, I'm getting hyped this week. It is my peak week for bodybuilding. I have never done anything like this in my entire life. And you know what I stand for? I stand for a world where people can challenge their body minds and break free from the family trauma, the personal trauma. You know, I've had people really close to me deal with pretty severe eating disorders. And so a lot of people would say, oh, you, well, because it runs in your family, you probably shouldn't be a bodybuilder. F that. I'm gonna choose something else. I'm gonna make a stand and take a stand and create a different pattern where I can be a bodybuilder and I can have a healthy, positive, mindful relationship with food and I don't have to be the pattern that continues through the lineage of eating disorders. Done. And I can be a possibility for others to step into that for themselves. That takes courage, that takes community, that takes practice. I digress. All of these things I'm talking about today, as you can hear, I'm coming at this with like a, a courageous, serious tone because I need you all to get that you are the doctor of your life. You can choose guides to facilitate. You can choose them. You can shift your consciousness. And this is something that Michael and I are cultivating this spring. And I've mentioned it here and there on social media, our spring immersion, you've heard me say it in here, 
This is a lot of the language of the body and the consciousness of the body and conscious languaging are a few topics we are gonna go into and how you can shift your language and in turn shift your experience in your body. You know, some of these suggestions I've made to people on the table of like, what if you asked a different question or what if you had a conversation with it this way? It's like, I can feel their neurons just like, like, whoa, that's a paradigm shift. That's a paradigm shift. And when you shift your paradigm and you shift your perception, your body will follow. And it can take time to ingrain that new pattern and live into it. Because it's, it's easy to want to default back. We all do it. We're human. We have a reptilian brain. It's not going away. The fear brain is not going away. So accept it, right? People talk about like, oh, I have limiting beliefs. I have limiting beliefs. It's like, no. You have a, you have a reptilian brain and then you have the super conscious human brain. And so you need to learn how to dance and you need to learn how to recognize when you default into that reptilian brain, that amygdala brain, the, the mammal brain, right? Recognize it, that's how you shift. You're not gonna get rid of it. So let's let go of this saying of like limiting beliefs. You have different beliefs that exist about yourself in different modes of the brain. More to come in the immersion, my friends, is this like, there's so much here. I was not even gonna do a Mindfulness Monday today and I felt very called to come on here. So I'm gonna digress. I'm wishing you all a great week. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being part of this community. Thank you to those of you who choose to do the work and become a pro. I got disconnected there. I think Facebook is telling me I'm done. Thank you for doing the work. When you do the work, by means of quantum entanglement, it changes the world. So just know that, okay? Peace, love. Keep inspiring.